Hello, I am Tom Bradby and this is Where I Write. As you can see, it's not uh, terribly ergonomic, but this is where I spend my time. This is my latest novel, which I'm very, very excited about. But first, before we talk about that, let me just show you around a bit. It's full of all kind of weird knickknacks I've picked up over the course of my career, both writing and in news. So I thought I'd show you around. So this is the way up to my study. This is uh, the Time magazine review of The Master of Rain, the novels I wrote set in 20 Shanghai. Um, it was just unbearably exciting to be in Time magazine, so I'm afraid I framed it. My first novel was called Shadow Dancer and was published in 1998. And then a long time afterwards, somebody optioned it for film and tried to get all kinds of writers like Roddy Doyle to do the script and they said no, funnily enough. <laughs> so eventually the producer said, well, I said to him, look, could I have a go at writing the script? Anyway, it turned out he said yes, very kindly, and it turned out to be the most amazing experience. So a long, long time after I'd written my first novel, I'd conceived of the idea wandering down the Falls Road in about 1994, and the film was finally premiered at Sundance in 2012. And that was an amazing experience. Hardly anyone had seen the film outside of the financiers when we got on the plane to Sundance and we used, suddenly you're in a movie theatre full of hundreds and hundreds of people and all the critics are intimidatingly assembled in the front row. Anyway, thankfully it went critically really well and that was unbearably exciting. And this was the poster from uh, Berlin, um, which never got used as the final poster, I think partly because Andrea's agents didn't think much of the fact that she was a lot smaller than Clive here despite being the main part was fair enough but anyway I was so it was such a brilliant experience in being in Berlin that I I think I nicked this from the press conference and um well not nicked took and I managed to get it on the plane on the way back I don't can't quite remember how I did that but anyway here it is outside my study so I do do a fair amount of writing actually sitting at this it's not very ergonomic, uh, as I said. I do most of my writing on this. So I actually like to move around. I do spend quite a lot of time here gazing out the window, trying to concentrate on writing. And I move around a bit. I sometimes move around this room, sit in different parts of the room, sometimes different parts of the house. And traditionally, I have written an awful lot of uh, my books over the years because of, obviously, my job in news. I've written on trains, I've written on planes, I've written in the back of a taxi. So I don't have, I always find it fascinating talking to writers about the different way that, you know, I'm quite good friends with Robert Harris. He gets up every day, writes the same amount in exactly the same time slot. And I think that's kind of amazing. I've never really quite been able to do it like that. My writing tends to be a much more scattergun thing. If I'm very clear about what I'm wanting to write. I can be very focused and get a lot down. If I've got to a point where I'm not quite sure where I'm going to go next, it's actually, I really rather love, you know, often I'm then on my way to work and I just, it goes out of my mind and I don't think about it for a day or two and then perhaps I can come back to it and that little log jam has cleared. So the way I write, the way everyone writes is totally different. The way I write is certainly not in sort of isolated. I've never really been able to do that because of my job in news, but I've never wanted to do that. And I think even if I were one day in retirement to be doing nothing but writing, and I'm not sure I ever would want to do that, but even if I did, I think I would still write in a rather scattergun way. We moved out to Hong Kong. Uh, I was Asia correspondent for ITV in the late 90s, and I went, one of the quite early things I did is I went to Shanghai, which is an amazing city, and on the plane I read this book uh, about how it had been in the 20s, and the night before I went, I'd watched the film L.A. Confidential, which is one of my favourites. Anyway, I read this book that, about the extraordinary, incredible life of the city in the 1920s. And I thought, this is one of the best settings for a thriller ever devised. So I kind of sat down almost immediately and wrote The Master of Rain. And when the book was published by Transworld, this was the tube poster, which, A, I think, is a brilliant... I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit much to have a whole tube poster hanging up in your house but a I thought it was the most brilliant ad campaign ever and secondly it was just so exciting to go down into the tube in London and just see a poster of your book this size and so I asked Transworld if they could give me a tube poster which they probably thought was a bit weird but anyway um, here it is and I still 
absolutely love it. I don't know, it's the kind of exoticism and the colour. I think it's just an amazing poster. I was really terrified that somebody would recognise me and see me standing in the tube in front of my own poster. But anyway, they didn't, so there you are. That's all good. Starting writing is always really difficult because it's so easy to get distracted, isn't it? You can log on the internet, you can go on social media, you make a cup of coffee, and you maybe, maybe make another cup of coffee, put on some music, go on Twitter, spend too long on Twitter, change the music, then make another cup of coffee, and maybe decide to take the dog's ball. But in the end, once I get down to it, then I'm usually really pretty absorbed in it for a while. And sometimes I just come to the desk absolutely knowing what I want to write and I just get straight down to it and I'm gone for a couple of hours whilst I... It's the most absorbing and in a way relaxing process there is really because it really takes you away from everything else.